I would do a hello, 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 but it doesn't do any good. Hello, this is Tom from RV Travel and Living. Today we have uh, Kathleen. Uh, she has a message here, so I'm going to read that message. I want to thank everybody for always supporting us and always going on our channels and on our videos all the time. And um, this is, she doesn't say where she lives, but anyway. Let's just this. I'll just read it, and I'll I'll give my answer. Kathleen, Tom, I've been thinking about living in an RV full time, and my choice is in Yuma, Arizona. Can you give me advice on where I should go? Should I buy from a dealer, or should I, should I just wait until I get there? I'm 68 now and single. I prefer. The RV lifestyle, because my husband and I did it part-time for 35 years. But I am a little afraid. Can you help me with that? As you can see, I got my compadre here. He's in the video, which is uh, nice to see. Kathleen, uh, you know, uh, you my Arizona. It's been a while since I've been there. So I can't tell you about what's down there. But here's, my, here's, here's what I would say. There's so many options you can do. Uh, there are what they call RV uh, parks, elderly parks, and elderly. I mean, I, I say elderly. It's not elderly. It's parks that are 55 and above, 50 and above, 60 and above. The reason why they have those parks like that, it keeps out a lot of the riffraff, the partying all night, the noise all night. There's restrictions. You park you there full time, and they're reasonable. It's really reasonable rates. And they vary. There's parks around there. I did some research on it, but you'll have to figure out kind of what you would want to do. Uh, as far as living in uh, Yuma, uh, Yuma itself, it's a, it's a beautiful place, and uh, you'll enjoy yourself there. As far as traveling there, I would wait unless you get to find a deal and drive it down. Uh, there's nothing wrong with, with someone. You need to have someone you know. Uh, presently, there's there's a couple ways you can do this. If you're looking to buy one, if you don't have one now, and you want to have one there, and you maybe want to do a little traveling in it, uh, the best thing to do is find somewhere locally, uh, a friend or someone that actually go with you to the RV dealer and purchase one. But it needs to be very knowledgeable, and you need to hold your guns. Uh, you can't overpay, and they will charge you. Uh, quite a bit. In other words, they'll take advantage of you. They'll try to. Uh, not everybody they take advantage of, believe me. So you need to go in with financing for yourself, meaning uh, go to the bank, get finance if not, however you're going to finance it or buy it. Take someone with you that knows RVs, front, back, up, and down. If you don't know it personally, take someone with you that does. And I'm sure you've got a lot of RV friends, being your husband 35 years. You can call on and I'm sure they'll be there in two seconds to help you out. Well, you purchase, purchase one there or somewhere else, that's entirely up to you. It depends on your budget and how you want to handle that. But Kathleen, if it was me, I would either find one locally, right there where you're at, instead of going all the way there, because you don't know anybody down there. Find someone there and go to with you and help you out there. And then, as far as bringing it down, you can drive it down yourself. However, you get any there, and or have somebody transport it for you. They will transport that, and you'll, there's many people that will help you with that. In fact, a lot of RVers help out each other. Uh, husband and wife teams do it all the time. One will drive, one going this way, and they'll take the RV right behind the other one and bring it. And a lot of husband and wife teams do that. So you can find some locally, and or find someone that you know that may be going down that way. A lot of people are going to Arizona this time of year because it's snowing <clears throat> up north. And uh, depending, you did not say where you live, though. And uh, I don't know. I took it the way I was reading it, and I took it to you're up north somewhere. Because you talked about being way down there. Wherever it is, I think you'd be better doing that. And then once you get down there, then you'll be, then you can search around. You can always do. Uh, Pre-call around, go online, find the parks, find out what their rates are, find out if they're 50 and above, 55 and above, what they are, what the restrictions are, what kind of homeowner association they have there, 
find out all the restrictions and the complaints that they have, and do your research, do your due diligence before you head down that way. And I think it will save you a lot of hassle and time. So many of those parks are great and fantastic, and some are not. And what I mean by that is some are, they, uh, everything is fine for the first few months, and then it gets sour. And if you already paid a year's lease on it or a six-month lease or whatever on that lot, you can kind of get burned. So you really have to really think about that. I would not sign anything for a year or six months until so you try it month to month. You may find another park somewhere else that it was not on Yellow Book pages or not on the Internet. There are a lot of parks that are not on the Internet, and they're great parks. My my uh, third park that I was in was not on the Internet. It was not on anywhere. I, had a, I, I think I, I searched, and I found the phone number by someone else that had the phone number because they're staying there. And it was a great park. It had a swimming pool, had a little mini golf place. Had a really nice uh, center in the office. You know, you could play pool. And, uh, you had a gym. You could work out. You could walk. And it had this amazing bunch of showers. I don't know. As RV, you take a shower in your RV or you take a shower over there. It doesn't really matter. It's like it's up to the person. But they had 50 showers. Some parks have only two, four. <coughs> this one had 50 maybe more. It had so many showers and they were clean and spotless and painted and well taken care of and plenty of hot water. And the park wasn't, I, it, it, I wasn't that big. It probably had 50 slots but had 50 showers. Uh, and it was not that big of a park. They kept the park immaculate and they're really nice people. I ended up paying uh, uh, really $300 a month include electric and cable TV, internet, everything all included in it. Great place. I'd go to the office, and they, uh, the lady would always say, Hey, Tom, free snacks over there. Go get them. And they would always have something going on. Donuts and chips and dips and something going on to keep people active and happy. And they're always a pretty active park, too. But I would say, uh, just do your due diligence. Find one where you're at locally, and you can get it down there. If you're not willing to do that and travel all the way to Yuma and then buy the RV, I think you might be your, your worst thing you could ever do. And that's just me telling you. So Kathleen, this is out to you and hopefully anybody else is thinking about buying an RV. I say buy it locally. If your husband lived there 35 years, I guarantee you and your husband lived there 35 years where you're at. I guarantee you were RVers part-time. You've got quite a few people you could reach out to, quite a few people that can help you, and quite a few people that put you on a, a good path and make sure that RV is going to be okay for you because there's nothing worse than having something break down and then you got to fork out a lot of money to pay something and that could have been resolved before. Now I will tell you this, do this before you do anything and there's nothing wrong with this. When you purchase an RV and you you're, say you're purchasing a Class A or Class C or even a B, tell the dealer where you're purchasing that at. If you're going to purchase it at a dealer, Tell the dealer you're purchasing this vehicle with the help of your friend, family, associate, that you want to spend a night. And they're going to say, huh? They're going to say, well, why would you want to do that? I want to test out everything, make sure it works before I finalize this deal. I want to sleep in it. And because I have in the contract 72 hours to break out of this deal, right? And make sure it's in there. Sleep, spend the night, spend 24 hours there, get your feet wet as far as how to hook up everything. They have a spot, believe me, whether you run the generator all night, and if they don't fill it up with gas, make them fill it up with gas. That's the least they can do. You're buying a car. I mean, you're buying an RV from them. Have them fill it up. Don't, don't get in a situation where, oh, it's going to cost $800 to fill it up. I don't care. Fill it up. So I'm just telling you, they'll fill it up. Believe me. There's usually a tank right around back of the building. All RV dealers have a tank of, of fuel that they can load, whether it's diesel and or gas, that they can fill up your car, believe me. All car dealerships have them. All car, car dealerships have them. Or they have a deal that they pay pennies on the dollar for it at a local gas station. But all car dealers have some type of gas pumps around back of their building. They can fill you up. And if they don't have one, go to the local tell them, okay, I'm going down to the local car dealer and you pay him then. 
Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. God bless everybody. And I'll see you guys next time.